I fully admit to being a stoner, but I promise you I'm not making this up. No amount of roaches can cook up a fever dream like this, so don't start pulling excuses to wave my story off, okay? Let me tell you how this went down. I'm on the low end of the high I got off of popping an edible and playing some Mortal Kombat when I get a series of texts from this chick I'm totally head over heels for asking me for a favor. Eve was everything I wanted in a woman. She was about as goth as they come, always wearing dark lipstick that matched her hair, some kind of fishnets on her legs in this big oversized beanie that holstered some spare dollar bills to spend on pop tarts. She had a sharp tongue, a sharp mind, and even sharper nails. We became familiar with each other towards the tail end of high school where I started selling her weed at a discounted price that made her smile. We had a habit of smoking together, but our relationship never went past friends who hotboxed in their dad's garage. Sometime after we both graduated, she got a gig as a late night gas station employee while I stayed drifting at home, collecting scraps of cash to fund my mom's dream of me going off to college. But here she was texting me at 9.12 p.m. begging me to fill in her shift for a couple of hours. Had this been anyone other than her, I would have either told them I was busy or ignore the text outright. But for her, I'd do anything. My mom wasn't home, so I had to call myself an Uber to get to the gas station in time. I sneakily picked up some of my neighbor's flowers out of their garden, holding them in a little glass cup I brought from home. The last thing I grabbed from home was a tiny bag of dope, along with some rolling papers, just in case. This is it, I thought to myself on the ride there. This is where I can woo her off of those big platform boots she wears. Maybe 15 minutes later, my Uber driver dropped me off. I paid him a generous tip and walked to her little gas station, a couple flowers in hand. Hot boxing may not have been the best pickup tactic, but what kind of girl doesn't like flowers? I'm a tall, blonde-haired stoner. How could she say no? Was I overconfident? Maybe, but... Confidence is key, fellas. I had only been to the gas station in the middle of nowhere a few times, but tonight it felt like coming home. The doors opened on their own as I walked in, seeing her pale face smirk at me from behind the counter. Took your time showing up, she said. Running a hand through my hair, I gave her the suavest response I could. Ah, shit, you know me. So how come you got a split from your shift? I placed a cup of flowers firmly on the counter, noticing the single swaggering pink petunia inside. She plucked it out of the cup and sniffed it pleasantly. It's some stupid anniversary for a friend of mine. I forgot. I would have been stoned had you not been here, though. The sneaky eyelash batter she did, how her eyes widened like a puppy. God, she had me around her finger and she knew it. You bet, I said proudly. I'll do whatever you need me to do, but I want something in return. Her manicured eyebrow arched curiously. You need something? Here I thought you were here at my beck and call, she pouted. As much as I wanted to succumb to her infectious charm, I stayed strong and playing hard to get. Well, I don't mind lending a hand so long as you, uh, lend me yours, if you know what I mean. I made the motion of putting a ring over my finger, earning a chuckle from her. You're a riot, Cole, she said, and put the petunia inside of her beanie and patted my shoulder, a tall task for her given our height difference. Even the big boots she wore didn't help. I'll be back around 1 a.m., okay, she said. Once I come back, you can go home. Just be ready for when I text you tomorrow for our date. My heartbeat started thundering in my chest as soon as she said it. You can count on me, I shouted, giving her a thumbs up. She smirked back at me as she exited the store, very aware of the fact that I loved watching her from behind. Once she was out of sight, I raised my arm into the air, feeling a sense of beautiful triumph over winning a date from her. And all I had to do was watch some gas station for three hours, 
How hard could this be? I ate my words pretty damn fast when I found out the fact that I was the only person who was going to come into the gas station for the entire shift. I didn't expect a big turnout at this time, but no one at all. I've never felt this bored in my life. The apex of my excitement an hour into the shift was putting some spare change I had lining my pockets to open up and boil a package of instant ramen with the shitty electric kettle the store had in the closet. I got intimately close with all the contents of the closet, mostly just dusty plastic trays and old chips packages. I did find an old register though. I guess I had some fun pressing the buttons and hearing the sound effects coming from them. The first hour is where I realized that in my rush, I had actually forgotten my phone behind, leaving me with only my wallet, the rolling papers, and dope bag in my pockets. As much as I wanted to smoke it, I was kind of paranoid thinking about if somebody caught me, so I kept them sealed tight. Maybe another half hour passed and I started to find the shitty fold-up chair that I found out back becoming more and more comfortable as I sat down and began to close my eyes for 10 second bits. Those 10 second bits shortly became 30, which then became minutes at a time. Just before I was going to fall asleep for good, a sudden and loud thud jolted me awake. The whole building shook for a moment. The fork I used to eat the ramen clanged to the ground and the already damaged lights began to flicker. Peering outside through the glass doors, I wasn't able to see anything. What had caused that tremor? Did I nearly just sleep through an earthquake? I opened my ears and was able to hear the faintest sound of plastic hitting the ground like it had been thrown with force. Snaking through the aisles, I found everything was in its place so nothing here got knocked over. The sounds of plastic could be heard again, this time dragging against the ground. It took me a second, but I eventually got the idea that the recycling bin I saw out back was being knocked over and raided by raccoons. I always hated those furry bastards. Arming myself with a broom that was huddled by the counter, I made my way to the end of the gas station and kicked open the door, prepared to shoo away any raccoons I saw. What I didn't expect was to see the recycling bin completely torn apart, lying empty on its side. This wasn't the kind of damage raccoons were capable of. This bin was completely torn in half from the middle with thick stroking claw marks like a bear had just come through and tore it apart. I mean shit, was there a bear? I sure couldn't defend myself with a broom if there was. I went to open the back door and my heart sank to realize that it had closed on its own and locked. I'm pretty sure Eve took the key needed to unlock that door with her by mistake, so I had to walk all the way around the store to get back inside via the front. As I walked, I could see slash marks remarkably similar to the ones that had torn apart the recycling across the building, scarring the concrete the building was made out of like it was flesh. These marks looked far bigger than any bear claw, so the bear idea was out the window. What kind of animal was I dealing with here? Before I could come up with any more theories, I heard the most fearsome, grumbling roar I have ever heard in my life. It sounded like a mountain lion being drowned in icy water, letting out its final screech for help before its life was snuffed out. The worst part? It was coming from inside the store. I peeked around the corner and saw that the automatic doors were stuck open, struggling to shut themselves. A tangle of sopping wet black hair entangled both of them, acting like a rope, holding both doors open. The lights inside were now flickering rapidly, chipping away at my already minuscule resolve. Swallowing deeply, I tiptoed closer inside and got an eyeful of what was making the noise. A black, scaly, alligator-like creature with a horse-like mane running down to its rat-like tail was scurrying across the floor, lapping up crumbs and dust with its forked tongue. The beast was easily ten feet wide and four feet tall, bumping into aisles and knocking stuff over. Each one of its slimy scales oozed with a dark liquid that began to pool on the floor like tar. I stood no chance with God knows what this thing was, so I went to turn around and sprint away, but I dropped my broom in the process. The creature noticed and whipped its head around so fast that I thought it would break its own neck. This thing had human features on its face, dark brown eyes, a small button-like nose, and the soft, pitch-black lips of a woman. 
all these human creatures plastered on its lizard body made for a disgusting sight that looked straight out of a Photoshop nightmare. I booked it away from the store as the creature turned around and started crawling after me, hissing with its forked tongue. The lizard creature was surprisingly fast despite its appearance practically gliding across the concrete with its glittering claws. At first, I made a straight dash in front of me near a road, but I made a hard left in order to gain the upper hand and use a monetary speed advantage to escape and use someone's phone to call animal control or the police, I mean anyone, to deal with this thing. Unfortunately, it seemed to predict this motion wholesale because it turned around to its left at the precise moment I was going to hard curve it. It made a slash for my ankles, but I just barely hopped out of the way and kept running. The beast groaned and creaked as it chuckled at me, but kept its frightening pace. Feeling the stress of exhaustion weighing on me, I used my last bits of energy to run behind the store and into a small collection of thick trees, hopping onto the nearest one and climbing it as fast as I could. I was never much of an adept climber as a kid, but hysterical strength is a way stronger drug than any weed I've smoked. I quickly made my way onto the top layer of branches, hearing the creature scratch at the base of the tree angrily. I was afraid it would try to tear the tree down but it instead snarled and screeched at me once more, seemingly upset that its prey had evaded it. After maybe another minute of it roaring at me, it trotted off in the opposite direction, practically galloping like a horse. My immense relief was short-lived as I spotted someone walking along the dimly lit road. They were wearing a huge pea-green military coat and had long blonde hair, just walking idly down the road. I didn't allow myself to question why they were walking as the creature spotted them and started running down the road. I wanted to shout and alert the attention of the bystander, but fear's grip on me was too tight. I slid down the tree carefully and took a full minute to gather the strength to unhook myself from it and ran inside the gas station, peeking from the windows. By now, the bystander had walked far enough to nearly reach the parking lot of the gas station making direct eye contact with the creature. The beast chuckled once more and started charging for the bystander, but they had far more tricks up their oversized sleeves than I anticipated. Skillfully, they rolled right out of the way and pulled out a massive knife from behind them, making a precise slash against the beast's cheek. It screeched in pain and received another slash that cut along their scalp and marked a single eye. It went into full panic rage mode as it blindly swung its claws at the mysterious man who was able to dodge all of them. He took what I thought to be some kind of fighting stance as he looked for an opening, all with a completely blank expression on his face. In a final move, the bystander leaped and plunged their blade directly into the malformed skull of the beast, twisting and digging the blade deep and deeper until it stopped screaming and was silent. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. How was this random guy night walking able to dispatch this thing so fast? Hell, why did he even have such a massive knife on him in the first place? The man pulled out a rag from his jacket pocket and wiped away the dark blood that coated his blade, sticking it behind his back once more. Using both hands, he dragged the beast away from all of the streetlights and leaned over it like a dentist would to operate on their patients. He started rubbing the beast up and down with his bare hands. And I shit you not, he started disintegrating at his touch. He was as quick and efficient as a masseuse, causing the beast to crumble and fade away into a mountain of ash and dust within seconds. Looking none the bothered, he swept the ash off of the road and made his way towards the gas station. I ducked under the window and huddled up in the corner, praying that he wasn't going to do the same to me. I felt like such a damn idiot for forgetting my phone. I was so ashamed I wasn't going to be able to call anyone, call Eve, or even my mother. I could hear the man tearing away the bundle of hair that held the doors open and walk inside, his big boots sending my heart into shock with her thick reverb against the floor. I held my breath as he seemed to walk aimlessly through the aisles, picking up food and putting it down indecisively. Finally, he walked up to the counter and placed a bag onto it. Anyone there? He asked casually. Praying everything would turn out all right, I made the calmest face I could manage and stood up rapidly, getting an eye full of this mysterious monster hunter. 
Honestly, he looked pretty average. He was just a youth, probably near the same age as me. Kind of tall, had pretty long hair and thick bags under his eyes. He looked at me blankly as he waited for me to check out his bag of cough drops he had put on the counter. As I nervously checked him out, he decided to make small talk with me. Quiet shift tonight? He asked. No, actually, it wasn't a quiet shift at all. I think it was the worst shift I've ever fucking had in my life. I almost died for crying out loud. But I don't think he saw me being chased by whatever that beast was, so I played it cool. Yep, yep, not much going on tonight. How about you? How come you're out so late? Before I could kick myself for asking such a stupid question, he responded. Not much, really. I'm just a, just a night owl. I like to be out late, he said. The fact that he can go from killing and vaporizing a monster to casual small talk with the same expression on his face chilled me to the bone, and he noticed. You all right, buddy? You look like you've seen a ghost, he said. No, I just, you know, my ride left me last minute tonight, so not sure how I'm going to get home. I said and lied, because I didn't know what else to say. I don't mind driving you, he said. My car's just down the road. Come on. My heart flew into a panic as I raised my hands to try and politely refuse his offer. Getting into a car this guy? No way. But I kind of backed myself into a corner because of what I said. I'm fine, really, I stammered. Don't worry about me. The man gave me a curious look but didn't press me on the matter. How come you don't have a name tag on? He asked earnestly. I gulped. I'm just filling in for a friend, I explained. My name's Cole. The man gave me a slight smile and reached his hand out, which I quickly shook. His hands were so, so cold, like he had just stuck them in an icebox. Nice to meet you, son, he said. He looked no older than I, but the way he called me son felt too natural, like he was my elder in mind over body. My name's Jamie, he said. I fumbled giving Jamie his change for his cough drops, nearly dropping the stack of quarters in his hand. You have yourself a good night, you hear, he said. Probably ain't too safe out here at this hour. I nodded my head quickly as he left the store casually, parting with a wave of his icy hand. As soon as he was out of sight, I let out the longest sigh of my life and fell to my knees, crippled with fear. It was a long walk, but I hoofed it out and ran all the way home, doing my best to stay away from any street lights. I was terrified of running into any other creatures or Jamie, but I just had to get out of there. I felt like shit for abandoning Eve's shift like that, but once I got home and called her over the phone, she would hopefully understand my situation. My legs were exhausted when I finally reached my house, which I proceeded to lock down as much as I could. I got my hands on my phone again and sent out a dozen calls and several dozen text messages to Eve to try and explain the situation, but as of now, I haven't gotten any responses. It's been hours after the incident, but my heart is still very much stuck in panic mode. I think I'll just unwind with this baggie in my pocket and wait till my mom gets home. I don't know what that creature was or who Jamie really was, but I'm in no mood to find out. All I know is that I'm never going to that gas station again. I don't care how hot Eve is.